as promised, I already have a success story from my new Sync Edge music licensing service. Now, I, as I told you guys last week, I couldn't believe that I got something this quickly. I knew that I'd get some success stories within a month. I was really surprised actually to get a, an email within 24 hours, I think, or maybe 48 hours of releasing it here on YouTube. And I got a producer, which I have with me right now, who was accepted by, I think, the first library he submitted to. Maybe not, maybe he submitted to other ones, but one of the first, at least, and he'll talk to us about that process. So I want to introduce uh, introduce you guys to uh, Yannick, and I know I'm not pronouncing his name correctly, but uh, Yannick is from Denmark, actually. So he's an international producer. He's not located here in the US. And I get this question probably more than any other question is, you know, Jesse, I want to get involved with your, uh, either the syndicate or the sync edge or any, or basically just music licensing in general in the US. Can I do that if I'm not located in the US, if I'm not a citizen of the US? Absolutely. Uh, y Yannick right here is a living uh, example for you right now. And I have members in the syndicate from the UK, from Australia, from Sweden, I, I from all over the world, okay, and Canada, obviously. So you absolutely can. Um, but you do need to sort of make sure that you understand how to work with a U.S. company and with U.S. Uh, PROs and all that good stuff. But Yannick, welcome, man. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing fine. So why don't you walk me through a little bit about the process of you had joined actually on the 1st of August. So you actually didn't get the early sign up. You actually just joined when I released it here on YouTube. So you got in and I don't know how many of the videos you actually watched, but without obviously revealing the details of the library, what was it about the video or the service that you found was very helpful for you in submitting your track and ultimately getting your acceptance letter? I um, I just uh, watched the first video you had there and uh, I thought that library kind of suited what I did and what I like to do. And uh, yeah, then I just uh, straight, straight away just uh, jumped on their website and uh, check out their music and uh, yeah, and then I used it sort of, they had like a submission thingy, a submission form that I just used, and uh, they wanted like some SoundCloud, SoundCloud um, links. So I just found some, some tracks I thought they would like, and uh, then I sent it to them, and they responded really quickly, so it was nice. And then how did you determine, uh, after watching one of the videos, because I obviously went through some of the examples and showed you the quality that you need to be hitting or getting better, what helped you decide, yes, I'm ready to go? Because they obviously liked what you sent them. So what helped you decide that you were ready? Because this is a big mistake that a lot of you guys are making that are watching this right now. You're submitting tracks that you shouldn't be submitting. They're not ready. They're not to, They're not on par with the curtain catalog. So what were some of the th ways that you sort of double checked yourself to make sure, okay, am I really wasting my time or should I really give it a shot here? I mainly like to do orchestral stuff. And I, I heard they had a lot of that and it was a lot of different genres and uh, like yeah, some of it like hybrid, some of it just straight up orchestral, some of it like uh, marsh bandish kind of, kind of. And um, I, I really, I really just, uh, I just like to do the epic stuff, so um, or the hybrid stuff. And uh, I, I thought uh, I could be. I listened to some of the albums. I thought I could, you know produce something in that caliber. If you would give one piece of advice to somebody who wants to get accepted by a music library based on what you've just done very quickly, actually, which is really cool, what would you say to to give one piece of advice, either in how you craft your email, how you put together your demo, how you present yourself professionally? What would be one just nice nugget of, of wisdom that you could uh, share onto the next producer who's trying to get where you are, at least to get that acceptance letter. So, I mean, and trust me, you have a long road ahead of you. You have a lot of work now to do, but you've definitely opened the door, right? Which is what a lot of producers are still, the 95% are still not able to do. So what what do you think would be one thing that would help those um, that are struggling out there to actually help open that door for them? I definitely think the, the tip about the research, like research to the, the library you want to submit to and find the one that's like best su suited for you, I guess. Because they're sort of all different, I guess, and uh, yeah, and make make sure you, um, of course, uh, you send you send them some music that's also straight away, I guess, uh, ready to be licensed. But also, uh, it should also be something that you really enjoy making in the first place. You're, you're absolutely right. Your heart has to be in it, or else you will start to resent the fact that you're just making blah music music that you're not really that excited about so absolutely um that's right. really cool that you did that and so you do orchestral and do you do any other uh genres that you um you produce yeah i like rock and metal i guess yeah and have you ever done hybrids where you combine the two yeah 
So that's a really, yeah, that's a really powerful thing for everybody that's watching this. Uh, hybrid music is when you basically combine two or maybe even three different genres into one track. It's very difficult to do. It's not easy, but if you can pull it off and make it sound incredibly unique, you can really carve out a niche for yourself because most producers just can't do it. They just can't. And it doesn't take a lot of work. I actually talk about this in my master course. It doesn't take a lot of work because a lot of times you're just adding one element of one genre onto like 90% of another genre. But just because there's a new element added though, it gives this hybrid feel. So it doesn't feel like it's quite in completely in one lane or in another lane. Um, but it's a really delicate balance, obviously, as Yannick can uh, attest to. It's a really tricky thing to do. But once you get good at it, it really will help separate you. So Yannick, thank you so much for taking the time today. And I wish you the best of success and for you know many more libraries to accept your music. And thank you so much for sharing your wisdom today. Thank you. You're welcome.